I'm Christian Howes, and today I want to talk to you about how to practice scales. Um, now, I've got a brand new book that just came out. It's called Jazz Scales for Violin, Viola, and Cello. And I'm sure if you look below this video, um, you'll be able to find a link for that. Um, you can also just go to christianhouse.com and then look for the shop. Um, so practicing scales, a lot of classically trained musicians like myself uh, practice scales off the page. And that can help to develop technical uh, problems, technical skills such as intonation, facility, tone production, vibrato, things like that. Uh, but jazz musicians and other creative musicians uh, practice scales in different ways and often from their head so that they can memorize or internalize melodic and harmonic relationships. So today I'm going to talk about six ways that you can practice scales um, that will help you consolidate and generate more benefits from the precious practice time that you have. I may break this series into two or three different videos. Um, so let's just get right into it. The first way to practice a scale obviously, is the one that everybody knows, which is to play a scale in root position. So I'm going to take a D melodic minor scale and play it in root position up and down on my instrument, something like this. I don't really need to explain that. Now, the second way is where I'm going to have to probably start explaining myself to a lot of classical musicians. This is what I call practicing the scale in extended range. All that means is, instead of starting on the root of the scale, like in the case of D melodic minor, instead of starting on D, I'm going to find the lowest note in the D melodic minor on my instrument. And I'm going to start there. And then I'm going to go to the highest note in the D melodic minor scale, at least in first position on my instrument. I could go higher if I wanted, but for now I'm just going to do extended range in first position. The way I like to think about this is I like to visualize a key signature and then just play every letter name that applies to that key signature. So in the case of D melodic minor, there's one sharp, it's C sharp. Everything else is natural and there's no flats. So I'll play in extended range from the lowest note on my instrument in the scale, which is a G. And that's D melodic minor in extended range first position. Now the third way that I'm going to practice the scale is in extended range again, I'm going to play the scale starting and ending from each degree of the scale. So starting from G, starting from A, starting from B. There's a few different ways that you could vary this. For example, Or, if you prefer, of course, I'm always going to do the same thing on the way down. So, you can consider that sort of every mode of the scale in extended range in first position on your instrument. Now hopefully it goes without saying that you can practice these scales, especially as a violinist or a violist, I would recommend practicing them in all positions. So all positions in extended range. So I could go to second position and I could just play the scale everywhere that it falls in second position. <laughs> And then I could play the modes in second position, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so finally, the fourth way, we're going to take sequences or patterns out of the scale and play them in, again, in extended range. For the patterns, they can be two note patterns, three note patterns, four note patterns, whatever you want. I'll take a simple two note pattern to start. And if you want to think about 
the assigning a number to each degree of the scale you can. So this would be 1, 3, 2, 4, 3, 5, 4, 6, etc., etc. <laughs> I'll always do the same, the sort of the mirror image on the way down. So that's a two note pattern. Here's a three note pattern. One, three, five, two, four, six, three, five, seven. I start from every degree of the scale. So one, three, five from G, and then go to the next note in the scale, A, and play one, three, five from there. Or you can think of it as two, four, six. Again, the, the mirror image on the way down. So with that, you have my first four strategies for practicing scales. In the next video I do in this series, I'm going to talk about step five and step six, which is going to really become more advanced and very useful, especially for improvisers, arrangers, composers. Now bear in mind that all these exercises are important not just for developing your understanding of these melodic and harmonic relationships, but also your listening, your ability to hear them. While ultimately I want you to be able to internalize and memorize these relationships, I've created the book Jazz Scales for Violin, Viola, and Cello so that you can have something to read off of that will make it easier to sort of get you started. So go ahead and look for that. And in the meantime, please do leave me a comment. Let me know if there was anything from this that, that really helped you or anything you didn't understand. And please do share this as well. Thanks. Mm -hmm.